Everyone loves Aung San Suu Kyi, once held as a political prisoner by a brutal military dictatorship, but now the de facto leader of democratic Myanmar, also known as Burma. She's captured the hearts of leaders across the globe. Barack Obama recently removed an array of economic sanctions on her Southeast Asian nation. So with such an esteemed Nobel Peace Laureate now in charge, things are surely looking up for the people of Myanmar. Well, not all of them. Certainly not the Rohingya Muslims who live in that country, victims of ethnic cleansing and maybe even genocide. Yes, for years, the Rohingya of Myanmar have lived basically as an underclass, most of them stateless. They've been terrorized by groups of violent Buddhists who wrongly label them illegal Bengali immigrants, and more than 120,000 of them have been forced into camps. The government doesn't even recognize the name Rohingya. But you know who else doesn't recognize the Rohingya? That's right, Aung San Suu Kyi. Not only was she accused of cowardice for refusing to call them by their name and criticized by the Dalai Lama, among others, but she since demanded that the US government not use the name Rohingya either. And in a remarkable 2013 interview with the BBC's Michelle Hussein, Suu Kyi refused to condemn the systematic violence against the Rohingya, that same violence that the UN Special Rapporteur has said could amount to crimes against humanity. Muslims have been targeted, but also Buddhists have been uh, subjected to violence. But there's fear on both sides. Both sides! Last time I checked, it wasn't Burmese Buddhists who were being confined to camps where they were slowly succumbing to starvation, despair and disease. And it wasn't Buddhists who were raped by soldiers at gunpoint during the violence that flared in Rakhine this October. Incidentally, it was later reported that Suu Kyi left that BBC interview muttering, no one told me I was going to be interviewed by a Muslim. Charming. Now, defenders of Suu Kyi argue that her hands are tied by an all-powerful military elite. They also point to the new advisory commission her government set up, chaired by Kofi Annan, no less, and basically tasked with ending the violence and promoting peace. But here's the thing, some local politicians are already refusing to cooperate with it. And while Annan can give recommendations, his commission has no power to enforce those recommendations. As part of her struggle against her country's military rulers, Aung San Suu Kyi spent 15 years in detention. 15 years waiting for justice. Now she's in power, how many years will she make the Rohingya wait for justice?